Good morning. I'm Dan Perrin. I'm sat today in our offices in central London, and I welcome you to part two in our series of uh, IAM Group's Big Data webinars. In this session, we'll take a look at making analytical sense out of big data, a look at the technology landscape and around some of the tools available out there that will, all, that will allow you to trawl through big data and expose actionable intelligence. A little housekeeping to begin with, each of your microphones uh, has been automatically muted just to ensure that everybody gets the best audio experience. Due to the form of attendance, we'll be taking questions via email uh, after this session, so please do let us know if there are some areas that you would like to explore further. Finally, can I ask you all to hit the full screen icon on your GoToMeeting toolbar to make sure you get the best view of the slides. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll share with you a brief introduction to IM Group, some background to what we mean uh, by big data, and then drill a little deeper into the opportunities for big data. You may already be an IM Group customer, but for those of you who aren't familiar with who we are, IM Group provides strategies, services, and solutions for information management and insight that help our customers cut costs, improve profitability, and differentiate themselves from their competitors. We help our customers solve complex information management challenges, deliver business insights, content management, collaboration, and search solutions, and provide a 360-degree view of our customers and partners with CRM solutions that can be deployed on-premise, in cloud, or with a hybrid approach. So as I said, yes, we provide uh, our customers with end-to-end -end service that spans information management, strategy, through to third-line support. And we do that with teams based here in London, Manchester, New York, and India. Uh, we've formed strong relationships with a number of technology vendors and continually research and evaluate the information management marketplace. Technology partners have recognized our innovation and ability to deliver real business to our customers through partner awards. So I'd like to start with a quick recap of what we mean by big data. Big data can generally be considered as being represented by extremely large data sets, which are difficult to work with. The management, and more significantly, the exploitation of big data is typically beyond the capability of commonly used tool sets, especially when required to be processed within a suitable timeline. And the growth of the data is exponential rather than organic. This is commonly thought of as the three Vs, variety, volume, and velocity. And it is when all three Vs are managed that an organization's opportunities for big data can become accessible. When the range of data sources and different types mean that a far more informed perspective on an opportunity can be gained by overlaying different information together, which even on face value of it may be thought that they are not related. And typically, this now means organizations are looking at a variety of external, corporate, and social data sources in combination with their own. The likes of Nielsen and Bloomberg have been providing data for the CPG and financial industries, respectively, for decades. And Twitter and Facebook are now providing a brand new standpoint. But more and more organizations are realizing the value of their own data assets to others as well. And we should expect the big data boom to further drive the data market. Volume means, for instance, that statistically decisions can be taken with a greater degree of certainty. As has always been the case, there may be good reason to retain data. As with the mining of any resource, technology enhancements mean that there will still be untapped value in the slag heap of data that has been spewed out of existing processes in which it has been incorporated or used today. Like we've just discussed, the combination of data with other evolving data sources means its value has probably not come to an end yet. Also, the advances of technology mean that simply the amount of data that uh, can be considered when evaluating a problem may not be restricted like it has been generally up to now. And velocity describes the need to ensure insight can be gathered quickly and just as importantly applied rapidly but effectively. Ultimately, for many organizations, the source of competitive advantage um, is the ability to make intelligence decisions faster before the window of opportunity expires shrinking the latency between business events and action. There are no predetermined metrics on what defines the three Vs. Opportunities for every organization to increase the value they um, derive from data, and not just the potential of selling data to third parties, exists. 
many organizations have left behind the age of just reporting, where much of the available resource was spent to gather and format data so that the rear view mirror standpoint could be covered, including achieving the required levels of compliance with the relevant authorities. More organizations are trying to understand what is happening, where the basics of good data management are being established so that more employee power can be focused on analyzing information. Effectively, businesses are beginning to drive the overall strategies uh, with information and insight, whereas before they may simply have been measuring their strategies. However, some organizations have been going a lot further than this for some time now. So perhaps what big data is as much a signal of is that we will see this level of activity around data and information become more mainstream. For example, meaning information is actually defining the strategy of businesses based on an understanding of what the data expects or predicts to happen, looking further down the road ahead, seeing opportunities well in advance and acting on those. Or another angle may be how many more activities in your business could be automated, not just uh, based on simple decision trees, but predictable actions in line and at velocity, uh, where it has simply not been possible to exploit the opportunity before. Predictability based on a wide variety of factors requiring sophisticated interpretation, continuous re-evaluation and split second response times, with a human factor being the definition and refinement of complex models, which are trained on both a variety and volume of data. Unfortunately, there aren't many shortcuts to reach this level of maturity. When it comes to the utilization of information within an organization, the continuous improvement of reporting and analysis will ensure the availability of quality data and business understanding to support the opportunities for the more advanced analytics. But this doesn't mean that, that maturity uh, will just evolve if data and information are left to their own devices. An organization will also need to take the conscious decision to take the step forward. And it isn't just a question of uh, more or new technology. It's also about the people and processes. Some organizations would describe information as an element of their DNA makeup, particularly some of the younger organizations where they've been able to incorporate the use and value of information into their blueprints from the outset. And it's fair to say that many of the leading information businesses are relatively young, some of the best known being Amazon, Yahoo, etc. One element of this blueprint is to ensure that data is available across the organization shared, not departmentalized, not hoarded, uh, and also not manipulated. To be trusting of analytics means data errors have to be driven out. This means the data is an asset in its own right of a business and not the department, and is governed as such. Potentially, turning the thinking for an organization round by 90 degrees, from where silos of data are owned by individual departments, which leads to the frequent duplication and redundancy of data. Data needs to be a common asset running across departments where each may have a specific responsibility to maintain or uh, enrich elements of this data. But this is done with a common goal and also critically a common meaning and understanding of the information. Organizations have also recognized that working and understanding information is a discipline in its own right. This is not to define the role, sorry, redefine the role of the mass information worker but recognize that the innovation around information and more complex problems may need dedicated specialists who relate the meaning of data and insight to the business. In some organizations, this role may coexist as a marketing department. However, many marketing departments are also some of the biggest culprits of the hoarding data. The advanced analysts or data scientists, as some vendors have termed them, need to represent the entire business across departments. And although much of their role uh, is to be leading the charge um, for the use of information and unlocking, unlocking the value of it. Critically, their worth is also in integrating that understanding back into the information and insight that is provisioned to the core of a business. So we've just discussed opportunities around big data. However, the majority um, of noise around the subject today is being generated by the technology vendors who see the need for new forms of technology to support the realization of it. Hence, for many technology vendors, significant investment has been made and will continue to be made over the coming years to support organizations in their bid to unleash big data and to become information centric. As we'll see, big data is causing a convergence in a number of different areas of technology. It is also leading to a convergence of both infrastructure and software vendors as a level of coupling of the two is becoming acceptable again. And big data is certainly seeing the redefining of several coalitions.
So where do we see some of this investment being spent? Well, that in part is depending on which state the different companies already have had in the ground. But actually, the all-encompassing ones have largely refreshed each of the components that can be considered to be part of their big data stacks. So largely through acquisition of many smaller, nimble, and innovative uh, organizations who have pioneered. Let's consider the data warehouse appliance, which has become a term commonly used for the databases based on massively parallel processing MPP architectures. The bringing together of multiple compute, compute nodes to act as one but with the ideology of nothing shared delivering truly scalable performance across highly distributed data. The requirements of a data warehouse appliance tend to be to load new structured data efficiently and to serve as many queries as quickly as possible. Queries that allow the relevant to be filtered out from the irrelevant at the speed of thought. The efficiencies for loading, integrating and transforming data following the ELT model, typically of the appliance, in the best cases is at least part due to the ability to parallelize the loading of data. Then utilizing the parallel processing ability of a database engine to transform the data so that it is in a state to serve a business, along with the removal of the need to aggregate and index data. All of this delivers a step change in performance that vendors such as IBM and Microsoft realize would only be bridged with a step change in development. Through the acquisition of Matiza and Data Allegro, now PDW respectively. Of course, for companies like Teradata, this has been their bread and butter for several decades. Ultimately, many of these data warehouses, uh, data warehouse appliances are still based on common relational database technologies, even if adapted to the specific requirements of the new environments. EMC's Greenplum utilizes a flavor of Postgres. Microsoft PDW is now SQL Server under the covers with common uh, adaptions that include the introduction of column orientated storage to deliver much improved performance for column aggregation uh, operations and also new levels of compression effectiveness that this opens <clears throat> and this has been widely adopted facilitating the storage of exponentially growing volumes of data. Other vendors have gone their own way with proprietary technology like uh, SAP with HANA and the more established Ganesio which allows them to maximize the opportunity for fast response when data is predominantly held in memory. There has also been a big boom in other in-memory tools over recent years, particularly in the business intelligence space, such as ClickView and Microsoft Power Pivot. However, these should not be confused. Um, today alone, these won't allow you to exploit big data. But the, big, uh, the data warehouse appliance to the ingestion of structured data is a significant stake in many organizations' big data forays, both as a vendor and consumer of this technology. And it does deliver partially across each of these, including going a long way to serving the, the, the velocity requirement. With the loading and transformation of data and being able to back business intelligence tools with up to now unparalleled um, speeds of query. However, the more advanced analytics have typically taken place in statistical modeling and mining tools offline, developed for these purposes such as SPSS and SAS. And in the world of big data, that would mean potentially working on subsets of data, <clears throat> and just as importantly, the need to move the data, and therefore an inherent impact on latency. So the need to bridge this gap through in-database analytics has been recognized, and vendors are increasing the level of analytical sophistication available directly within their appliance or at least leveraging the value um, of tools such as SAS by allowing the closer integration of these technologies. So we've now described a strong proposition for structured data and turning that into real insight. But what about unstructured or semi-structured data? This is where it appears that most vendors have put the same stake in the ground and committed at this um, point in time to Hadoop. Apache Hadoop has been around since early this century allowing applications to operate against multiple thousands of nodes and therefore huge volumes of data. So at the heart of Hadoop is the file system, the Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS, in which data is distributed and managed across multiple nodes through a master node. The second significant layer to Hadoop is the map, uh, MapReduce layer, giving access to compute power of the HDFS cluster. MapReduce jobs have two steps a map step and a reduce step. 
These steps can be thought to be very similar to the activity that a master node of a data warehouse appliance would undertake. Firstly, you split the problem down so that you can execute in parallel and independently across multiple nodes, this being enhanced with the effective uh, data distribution. You then need to pull all this together to give you the output or answer to the problem in the first place. The major difference uh, being that you're more likely to be scanning terabytes of Facebook streams um, searching for references to recently uh, released products and words associated with displeasure as you are querying the lifetime value of customers who have already bought the product from your online store in the case of the data warehouse appliance. Because of the similarities in architectures and approaches, um, for some vendors the obvious thought has been to embed Hadoop into their data warehouse appliances so that structured and unstructured um, data and the analysis of this can coexist on the same infrastructure. Other vendors have seen the opportunity to leverage their public clouds, both Amazon and Microsoft being the case in point, with S3 and Azure respectively. Of course, where the appliance approach gains in velocity by having all the data in one place, the cloud provides an idealistic, unlimited compute power. If the data can be moved and distributed at speed, then the, the, the gap is uh, covered. So much of the focus is on the ability to achieve this through high-speed connectors, for which several vendors are leaning on cloud era technology. However, this is not to say that every structured thought or idea will have to exist within the data warehouse appliance. With Hive and Hive query language, there is a data warehouse system and a SQL-like uh, language for Hadoop as well. So we could see a continuing blurring of the uses of Hadoop and the data warehouse appliance and the integration of the two technologies. Perhaps what is more key, and something not to lose sight of, is that to bring the insight from within the data warehouse appliance, advanced analytics or Hadoop to light, it will require it to be accessible to the information workers. So how the established tools begin to adapt will also be important. With announcements that the likes of MicroStrategy, Microsoft with Excel and others are already developing their Hadoop connectors. This is currently being attacked. Similarly, with technology vendors like Simba having seen their connectors embedded in a number of appliances to pre present data, which can be queried via MDX, allowing the direct feeding of Excel pivot tables, we may not have to wait too long before we have a one-stop shop for the consumption of our big data through familiar BI tools. I've already mentioned a number of vendors through this presentation. And many more technology vendors are also attacking this space. Microsoft, IBM, EMC, Oracle, SAP, HP, to name check a few. And we should expect to bring to bear we should expect each to bring to bear its own slant on the technology as ultimately it converges. Whether that is a lower cost of ownership, a more integrated stack, the most advanced or complete solution, or a stack for the masses. Each will have pieced together their technology solutions for big data covering the processing of structured and unstructured data to feed advanced analytics with the ability to serve the organization wide. We should note also that much of this technology is open and interchangeable. Finally, there are also continue to be disruptive vendors out there, smaller and more agile, who have been able to react more quickly to the provisioning the technology and who will also continue to pioneer. So in summary, big data is no different to any other potential business opportunity for which technology will be enabler, but only an enabler. At IM Group, we focus on working with organizations to help them bridge the gap between the technology and the business realization. Thank you very much for joining us um, for part two of our Understanding Big Data webinar series. Please email events at imgroup.com with any questions or requests for follow-up and we hope you can join us for part three of the series at the same time next week when we will discuss roadmaps and visualization. Thank you very much. Goodbye.